Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with USL Dunkirk. We are now the other side of the transfer window in 2027. We are now into our 10th calendar year in this game, aren't we? That is a very, very long time. In the transfer window, there was a bit of business. Two players joined the club and about five or six players left the club on loan deals. It was five players to leave the club on loan. Rodrig Eller is the first one. He has signed for Red Star on loan in League 2. We are not paying anyone's wages. I just wanted to get some of these people getting a little bit more football because they're not even anywhere close to the first team. So Rodrig Eller has dropped down a division. Filé has also dropped down to Domino's at League 2 to play for Claremont Foot. Yannick Velarde has also dropped down to League 2 to play for Gazilaka Jaceo. Yoon Kyung Soo, however, is the only player to stay in League 1. He has signed on loan for Lorient until the end of the season and has already played two games. Scoring? No, he hasn't scored. He might have got an assist. I'm not quite sure. He's played twice for them, though. And Algerian Sofen Khaled has returned to Algeria to play for ES Setif once again. He was there last season. I think he's just rejoined. How did he do last year? He uh, 10 games, one goal. So, yeah, he's gone back for a little bit more time. Two players have joined the club. First up is Brazilian right midfielder. There is a reason why we signed him, because he is specifically a right midfielder. Luis Carlos has signed on a free transfer. He popped up on my little scouting thing. Apparently, scored 12 goals and 54 appearances for Caldentes. Whoever Caldentes are, never heard of them. Um, they've got a guy who's half Portuguese. Is he any good? This is what happens. This is what I do. I get lost. He's really good physically, terrible at everything else. Luis Carlos is, I believe, half Portuguese, half Spanish. There you go. That is one of the reasons why I did pick him up as well, not only because he's a right midfielder, but because he doesn't take up one of the foreign player slots. He's joined on a free transfer, not getting paid a huge amount, probably won't see too much of him this season, might get the odd game here and there. And the big deal that we have managed to pull off in the January transfer window, Thomas Ramon, the 18-year-old Spanish striker signed from Sevilla. And as I mentioned in the last episode, we stole him from under the noses of Real Madrid and Barcelona. I think Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich were also sniffing about this player. So that's kind of the reason why I went for him. I mean, he is very good. Three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential ability. He is an advanced forward as well to give a little bit of competition to Vergara, who if I'm perfectly honest, isn't doing so well at the moment, despite the fact that he's technically a wonder kid. Ramon has signed for £41,000. That is an absolute steal for a player who could be playing for Barcelona B right now. So yeah, not a huge amount of transfer business took place during January. We did also play some matches as well. And things started off really, really well. It was in the Coupe de France ninth round against Bologna, our local rivals. We won 5-0 in this match. Vergara scoring a hat-trick after just 15 minutes. Bejoui also scoring a free kick, as he always seems to do. And Hassan Kamara also getting on the score sheet. We then decided to play a little mid-season friendly against Borussia Dortmund and somehow put six past them. I don't know how we did it. Xhaka roll for the brace. Asan Kamara once again. Asai Antwi scoring. Marco Vergara and Thomas Ramon all scoring goals. I'm assuming they didn't play a full, st full strength side in this one because we battered them. We returned to league action with two back-to-back -back victories. First up against St Etienne, it was an 86th minute Denis Vavro own goal that gave us the three points. Dragan Pokrovac also scoring a goal for us. Against Cannes, we just about managed to win this one as well. 3-2 in the end. Asan Kamara scored after one minute and they equalised about 35 seconds later with Saeed Jelassi. Asai Antwi with a goal as well and Brandon Collignon scoring his first goal of the season. And it was a pretty good goal as well, giving us three more points. We then had to play PSG in the Coupe de France 10th round, and we only lost 1-0. So far this season against PSG, we're actually doing quite well. We're actually in the positives when it comes to goal difference, because we've scored twice, they've only scored once. Today then, there is going to be two matches, Toulouse and Nice. Nice up first, currently ninth in the table. Toulouse all the way down in 18th place. We are currently sat in 10th. And I'm thinking this is probably one of those seasons that's going to dwindle out into absolutely nothing, which I am perfectly okay with. I want to have a few seasons. I, I'm by want. I mean, I don't want to have a few seasons. It would be nice to have a few seasons where we don't have anything to worry about. We're not in threat of relegation. I think we've kind of cleared that mark by now in this season. Hopefully, the next couple of years, we're going to start pushing for Europe. Ideally, we're going to get into Europe. Maybe there is a slight outside chance that we could get into Europe this season. I don't think it's going to happen, however. Also, we've been offered a job. 
at Burnley, and we are going to turn it down. They are currently 16th in the Premier League. Um, they are not in the relegation zone. They're not far away from it. But yeah, we're going to decline that. We're sticking with Dunkirk. Oh yeah, and one other thing. We've gone and got ourselves a new assistant manager, Yunus Kabul. I don't really know why. Um, I Basically, I've had a job advert out for about a year and a half looking for assistant managers, and I'm one of those people that always likes to sign ex-players. Yunus Kabul's name popped up, and I went... Actually, you're not terrible as an assistant manager, so we'll go for it. So yeah, Yunus Kabul has replaced Eric Bassier, maybe, something like that. Um, he wasn't the best assistant manager anyway. Yunus Kabul hopefully will do a better job. Match number one then of the episode, Nice, a team that apparently we have played quite a lot of times. Eight times in total, five victories for Nice, two for us, and a solitary draw as well in there, both of us in strong form. It's ninth versus tenth. We kind of, if we want to push for Europe, which, let's be honest, I do want to push for Europe. I just don't think it's going to happen. We need to be winning this one. We're not really going to get dragged into a relegation playoff unless we balls it up against Toulouse. There is a slim chance it could happen, but I really don't think it will because we are way, way ahead of that little pack at the bottom anyway. The starting lineup that we are going to go for then against Nice in goal is going to be Calvin Matupa. The back four is going to be Joe Ferreira, Pokrovac, Bejoui and Brandon Collignon is going to be the left back today. Ishmael Saar has come in for Sreko Matijevic, who is a little bit tired. Asan Kamara, who is also a little bit tired, but he's going to have to play because we've only got three defensive midfielders. Simon Bogle is going to be our right-sided midfielder today, with Zakharov, the uh, Kazakh left-back, being the left-sided midfielder today. There's a good reason for this. For Simon Bogle, he wants first-team football, and I'm more than happy to give him first-team football because he is technically the club captain. And if we have a look on here, if we look, these are the stats you need to be good at that wide midfielder role. He's actually not terrible. It's only crossing and tackling that he kind of struggles with. So we're going to give him a try there. He's never played there before. And a similar story to Konstantin Zakharov on the left-hand side. If we go training, I am training him up as a wide midfielder. He's also not terrible at, the, at these sort of positions. Passing, not the best first touch, and crossing, also not the best. But he can work on those as time goes on. Asai Antwi and Marco Vergara will be the front two today. On the bench, Gerrits is there. Vandalay, Matijevic, Ali, Boris, Czechzera, and Levan Gvimradza. Why is Levan Gvimradza there? We're not doing that one at all. Hold on. Gvimradza has been dropped for new signing, Thomas Ramon. Ramon needs to get some games, and I think once he gets going, he's probably going to be better than Vergara. A 4-4-2 then for Nice. Jack Lahn, every time we play against Nice, he always seems to score a goal, so we need to keep an eye on him. He's actually not even that good, is he? On paper, he's not the best. Hopefully, we can do a job against Nice. I'm expecting a draw. To be honest, I'm expecting us to win at least one game in this episode, because so far this season, I don't think you've seen a victory, and we're actually doing better this year than we are last year. 15 minutes in, and we've got the first highlight. Diabate running forward with the ball, plays it across, finds Rusi, runs forward, goes for goal, and Calvin Matupa makes a very easy save. That is the first highlight and the first shot on goal, apparently. Ah, wonderful. Ishmael Saar, the player who actually was match fit, is now currently injured. So the enforced change that we're going to do, Matijevic is going to be coming on. It's not ideal. I didn't really want to play Matijevic because of how tired he is, but we're going to have to do it anyway. And so far, this match has been pretty dull, hasn't it? Nice have had one shot. Bejoui with a free kick just before half-time. And Gautier, or Gauthier, maybe, uh, manages to save the ball for Nice. The highlight is going to carry on, though. Kamara forward to Ferreira, back to Pokrovac. Zakharov, for some reason, is on the wrong side of the pitch. And I do not like where this is going. Kamara now, back to Pokrovac once again. We've got three minutes of injury time, so something might come of this. Shorky is just alert enough to get the ball. And now Nice can possibly break down that right-hand side. Jack Lahn is now running in on goal. Why have you gone for a slide tackle? And Jack Lahn has hit the ball just wide of the post. It is going to be nil-nil at half-time. Two shots for Nice have both been highlights. All six of ours haven't. It's not been a good half of football, has it? Nil-nil, 42%. Um, encourage Eunice Kabul. No, I'm going to assertively say I'm far from pleased. That's also somewhat of an encouragement, isn't it? Two changes are going to happen at half-time. Vergara is going to come off for Thomas Ramon. And Konstantin Zakharov is coming off for Ali. We've done all of our subs at half-time. Let's hope there are no more injuries in this match because we are a bit screwed if that happens. 
just two minutes into the second half and we have a highlight. Bejoui heads forward but doesn't find a blue and white Dunkirk shirt. Shorky all the way back to the goalkeeper. Thomas Ramon is closing him down but isn't going to get the ball. Bogle heads forward but doesn't find one of our players. Ferreira now. He's got Simon Bogle in front and does use the young German. Inside to Hassan Kamara. He plays it through his own leg. Goes for goal. It's a good save from the goalkeeper. It's going to be a corner. Who's going to be going over to take it? I think it's Ali. It's not. It's a Asai Antwi. Ali normally goes and takes corners, and I don't know why, because he's six foot five. Asai Antwi once again is going to be set, stepping up to take the corner. It's towards Matijevic. It is cleared. Shorky can get the ball clear further for Nice. Jack Lahn now on that right-hand side. Cuts inside. Matijevic, what a tackle that is, and that ends the highlight. Right, I need to give them a show some passion. Do something. We're actually doing all right. We're just not doing a lot when we do have the ball. We're having shots. They're just not the best shots. Five on target. One highlight of those five shots on target. Six now. Bejoui with a free kick. This is going in because they always go in. His sixth goal of the season. Abdel Kadir Bejoui has made it 1-0 to Dunkirk against Nice. And that will move us up into ninth place in the table. And that goal has been coming for a very long time. We should have scored so many more goals. We've moved up to eighth. Asai Antwi with a corner. Pokravac is there. His effort is just over the bar. We've got 15 minutes to play. Demand some more into the final 10 minutes. I don't know whether we want to do any changes. I've done it before where I've dropped players back. The corner comes in. Kamara is there. It's a great television save by the goalkeeper. Was that the whole highlight? Or are we going to see something else from this? The goal kick goes all the way towards Ferreira. Who can smash it straight back the other direction though. Shergui. The left back plays it forward to Lan, heads forward. Matijevic gets it for us. Back to Pokrovac. Pokrovac lumps it forward towards Thomas Ramon, but he wasn't really paying too much attention to the ball. Nice now passing it around. We're approaching the 90th minute, and Coley is one on one with the keeper. He goes for goal, and of course, they score a late goal every flipping time. How do you stop conceding late goals? How do you do it? I don't know, like, the amount of late goals I seem to concede in this game. And it's not the formation or anything like that. The game just goes, yeah, right, we're on about the 85th minute. Let's do a 50-50 coin toss to see whether they're going to score. Oh, they're going to score. There's the equaliser. That is, once again, a superb performance from us. Just didn't score enough goals. And because of that late goal, we've actually dropped down in the table because Lorient managed to win also with a late goal against Guillaume, moving them ahead of us in the table. We are still actually just two points behind seventh place. So we're still doing a lot better than kind of expected. I'm just annoyed right now that we're not winning any on camera. Ishmael Saar as well has been injured for a couple of weeks. That's not terrible. Bejoui once again shines as we fall again. Match number two of the episode then is up against 18th place to lose. I believe they have just played Nantes in their last match, I think is what it was. And by the looks of it, they lost 2-1 away at Nantes. So hopefully this should be our first victory of the season on camera. I think it's the first one, if we win this, obviously. I suspect what's going to happen, we'll go 1-0 up and then draw 1-1 with an 89th minute winner. Or winner, equaliser even. The starting lineup we are going to go for then. In goal, it's going to be Calvin Matupa. The back four is going to be Ferreria, Vandele, Bejoui, and Zakharov. The midfield pairing Matajevic and Asan Kamara. This is kind of all very familiar to me at the very least. I'm not sure whether it will be to you guys. Yannick Cexera will be the wide midfield on the right. Ali is going to be the wide midfield on the left. We still have problems here. Cexera is actually quite good down that right wing because Ferreira also helps him out. Ali. Not so much. Asai Antwi will be the attacking midfielder. And today, Alan Varau is going to get a rare run out in this formation as that advance forward because I've kind of had enough of Marco Vergara. Toulouse are the type of team that are doing badly in the league, but when they play against us, will probably beat us. And that is a massive concern to me. To be honest, most teams that are below us, we seem to struggle against. Teams that are above us or in and around where we are in the table, those are the ones that we're picking up points from. Corner for Toulouse early on in the match, and they have hit the bar from Traore. We are lucky to still be at 0-0. 
Another highlight starting to lose with the ball. All the way across to Jan Valery, the Southampton youngster. Holds up play, finds Traore. Across to Banassia. Traore again and Banassia passing it between the pair of them. On the left-hand side now, Maouche tries to cross in. Can't manage it and Tiexera can keep the ball in play. Now where is the Portuguese winger going to go? Runs forward slowly-ish with the ball. Holds up play, gets tackled. And Toulouse once again with the ball forward to cock in the area. They're going to make it 1-0. They are not making it 1-0 thanks to the South African goalkeeper Calvin Matupa. We are going to see the corner though. It's towards the back post. Vandele, the Brazilian, can head it clear and that ends the highlight. It has not been the best of starts for us. I'm going to give him a show some passion early on, see if it makes a difference. We've already got a highlight. Ferreira to Asai Antwi across to Tiexera. Asai Antwi would like the ball back. So does Asan Kamara. He's got some space towards Ali and Ali has made it 1-0. His third goal of the season. He's not really celebrating, is he? There you go. The Burkinabe striker who's playing as a left midfielder makes it 1-0. And that is our first highlight of the game. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that we don't balls this up again. It's a highlight straight away for Toulouse, isn't it? Towards the penalty spot and it's 1-1. Almost straight away. Zhakarov with a throw. Tries to find a Antwi but can't do it. And now Toulouse with the ball deep in our half. And we're 2-1 down. Are you actually joking me? Banassia has made it 2-1 to Toulouse. And it's all comes from this terrible throw. Who was that even to? Zhakarov is on a 6.2. Ferreira on a 6.4. Zhakarov's dropping below a 6.2 now. What is going on? We're never going to win a match on camera. And we're going to finish mid-table. Half time and we are going to be shouting some expletives at people because they have been just bloody appalling and Zhakarov is going to be getting substituted. We're going to bring on Brandon Collignon. Last time he played he did score so maybe, just maybe, he might get his second of the season. What am I talking about? He's a left back. He's not going to do it, is he? Free kick for Toulouse and it is just over the bar. It could have been 3-1. We really, really seem to be struggling at the moment. I don't think Varal has even touched the ball. Asai Antwi's dropped down to a 6.3. Right, Antwi's coming off. Varal is also coming off. We're going to give some team talks to people. We're going to say passionately, I want to see... No, I have faith in you. They seem deep in thought. Okay, Illich very rarely plays. So hopefully him actually getting a game might mean he tries to prove a point and maybe get an assist or a goal or both. Get both would be nice. We do have the ball on our half. Bejoui plays it all the way back to our goalkeeper because that's the way that we want to be playing the ball. Bejoui forward this time. Can't find any one of our players. Miguel now for Toulouse. Back to Sangere. Mayush. Sangere and Mayush passing it between the pair of them. Vergara doesn't want to get involved in this play by the looks of it. Sangare stands still. Banassia forward to Miguel. They are passing it around us making us look absolutely stupid. Cock is going to make it three. He doesn't. Matupa makes a save but that was just awful football from us. Throw on for Ferreria. Tiexera. Illich heads forward, finds the Colombian Vergara. Kamara all the way across and manages to balls up his pass. And the counter attack, surprise, surprise, is on. And Toulouse have not managed to make it 3 1 because Matupa is having an absolute blinder at the moment. We are going to see the corner. It's towards the back post. Sangere was there. Matupa can hold on to the ball. So far, we are only in this because Matupa is actually a world class goalkeeper. Free kick for Toulouse. We're into the final 10 minutes. Bejoui heads clear. No one, not a single one of our players, felt the need to chase it down. Matupa claims the cross out of the air. Bejoui with the ball. Why did Matupa decide to roll that out? I don't know. Miguel now with the ball. Maouch. Toulouse are just taking the mick here. These, this is a team that are on 18th place in the table. They're sat on 13 points. We've got more than that in a month. Chexera can smash the ball clear to Vergara. Vergara should score a goal. He doesn't manage to score a goal. We win a corner. And oh my word, this game is frustrating me. Chexera steps up to take the corner. Towards the six-yard box, it's cleared. Illich is going to collect the ball. What's he going to do with it? Probably nothing, because he doesn't do a huge amount whenever he plays. And there you go, point proven. 82 and a half minutes now. Kamara. Across to Illich, Matijevic, he's got Ferreira on the right, he's got loads of space, crosses in, Ali's at the back post, he's gone for goal, he's hit the post, Jan Valery can clear it, it is going to be a corner I think, or it might be a throw, it's a corner, Tiexera steps up, it's towards the penalty spot, it is cleared, Vergara's going to hopefully get the ball and keep it alive. Where is he going to go? Back to Ferreira. Doesn't keep the highlight going. There is another highlight. There is a goal in this. Surely Matijevic with the ball back to Ferreira. 
Ferreira goes for goal from distance, and why are you doing that? You're a right back. Bejoui with a free kick in the 91st minute, and he's done it again. He's done it again. Abdul Qadir Bejoui with his seventh goal of the season. He's actually our top scorer. Bejoui is actually our top scorer, and he's a centre back. He has maybe rescued a point for us in this match. And I cannot believe we have to rely on our centre-back to score free kicks in order for us to actually get anything from matches. The full-time whistle goes. It is a 2-2 draw. And, oh, this game really irritates me. We are playing actually quite well. 14 shots, 11 on target. However, two goals from 11 shots on target. Eunice Kabul, I think we should really sympathise with that performance. I'm not sympathising with that was not good enough, you're coming into training tomorrow, even though, look at these players getting 8.3s and 8.4s, that was not good enough. Well, that point has moved us back to where we were in the table, up into 10th place once again. We are luckily, for us, Lance seem to keep dropping points. I don't know why I'm kind of looking up this high in the table, but Lance keep dropping points, so we're getting closer to 6th place, to Europa League football, possibly. I don't think it's going to happen. To be honest, all I want to do is win a game on camera. Dunkirk maintain unbeaten record of five games. Two of them were draws. Three of them were draws. So it's not exactly the most impressive record at the end of the day, is it? Right, that is going to do it for this episode. The next episode, we are probably going to go around this area. Probably. We might go Marseille and Lille, or maybe Lille and Rennes. I'm not quite sure. To be honest, there's all these huge gaps in between matches. What is going on with all these huge gaps in between matches? Maybe it's going to be Rennes and Le Havre. I don't know. It could be Lons and Marseille. Maybe maybe we do Lons and Marseille. Two of the bigger teams in the competition. We're going to do Lons and Marseille. I don't know why we're doing it. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2019 with USL Dunkirk. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And join me next time where we might actually win a game on camera as opposed to draw or lose. We've got eight wins, eight draws and eight defeats. And all of the wins have been off camera. This is ridiculous. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.